What's up, headbangers? This is Max Cavalera, and you're watching Interview Under Fire. Let's go. <laughs> We're gonna talk we're about that. Ready. We're gonna talk about that tour in a second, and uh, it, if everyone, because we're gonna publish this out live for everyone to listen to, and uh, I do want to say, Max, uh, uh, to kick things off, happy 2023. I know, and um, everyone who's listening, I'm gonna wel welcome you guys back to a new edition of Interview Under Fire. If I haven't done the introduction already, as always, this is your host and Sunny here, and of course, the underground icon, um, extreme metal trailblazer, a third world warrior, uh, the leader of a diverse and dedicated tribe. Say that five times fast. Max Cavalera, man. I mean, I'm Max, always an honor to having the Cavalera name here on IUF. I'm, I know we spoke three years ago. We, we had Igor uh, last year, or I think the year before that for Go Ahead and Die. It, it's right. like Cavalera. It's, it's like a household name in the world of metalheads. And I do want to thank you so much for returning today to IUF. Hard to believe it's already been three years since we last spoke. I'm going to talk about it during the pre-interview, but here we are. How are you? I know a lot has happened since 2020. Man. Yeah. How's yeah, life in 2023? If somehow we aged three years, you know, and, right, and, yeah, and yeah. here we are. Um, for, <laughs> first of all, uh, happy, new, happy metal. <laughs> happy metal new year to you too. Let's have a kick ass 2023. A better than 2020 for sure. Fuck 2020. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, man, things are good. I'm I'm happy to be talking to you again. I'm always I'm always happy to be talking metal, you know. Me, it's like, you know, shooting the shit, talking metal is one of my favorite pastimes, man. It's like it's like uh it's it's fun. It's, I've done that since I was a kid and it never gets old. Um, but yeah, we are um ready to to hit the road we actually did some stuff last year yeah we went to australia and we went to japan yeah, that's right and uh those are pretty sweet those those are awesome they, they were like uh they were big festivals so it was kind of like it was kind of cool to get back a little bit on a festival um you know thing that we haven't really done in a while and they're, they're big, man. Australia, they love their soul fly there. You know, they fucking, they, they went nuts. They went totally nuts. And we had a cool show. All, all the, we, we did like, I think, four festivals and two headline shows. The headline shows were sold out to like a minute. Um, They're like, you know, 1500 yeah. capacity club. And it, uh, it's really cool thing about Australia because all the cities are on the coast, right? So you're actually. Yeah. Pretty much going around the entire continent. Yeah, from one time, state, that's pretty crazy. This time we didn't do Perth. Perth is the only one that you go up. Yeah, we <laughs> end up not top. doing. We 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 stay in Sydney, Melbourne, and and uh, um, Sydney, Melbourne, uh, and one more. I forgot. Uh, I forgot uh, Adelaide, probably. Yeah, probably, probably. Yeah, but it was so cool, man. It was a cool festival. Um. Killer band, Deftones was there, Gojira was there, um, freaking uh, Lacuna Coyo, Ginger. Um, so yeah, it was uh, it was cool playing and having all these guys from bands at, uh, on the side of the stage watching you too. You know, like all the all the Ginger guys and Lacuna Coyo and Deftones yeah. and and Gojira guys are next on the side of the stage and. And uh, to to me, that's always always been badass when that happens. It makes you it, it it propels you to play better by force. You like there's like a pressure. Yeah, like you kind of have to meet them here, right? Right. Your peers, <laughs> your peers are watching you. So two things: you either fuck up bad or you elevate. <laughs> and it, 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 both things have happened to me. I I I I rarely fucked up. One time with when Metallica was watching us, we we're all drunk. Uh, that was back in Sepultura days. Um, and uh yeah, I think I announced Black Sabbath twice. Like I, you know, we play <laughs> we play we play Symptom of the Universe yeah. and I play a two two other tracks and I like kick in again on Symptom of the Universe. But my brother's like, 
you moron we already played that song you know and was like it was a oh, well let's play it again <laughs> yeah you play it again it's a fucking sit on the universe what the fuck yeah who cares it's a great uh, fucking song <laughs> you know but that was a that was a royal uh, that was a royal fuck up with the metallica so i survived a royal fuck up with the metallica guys watching what what doesn't get any worse than that so it can only go up from here you know it doesn't go more down uh, but no, it was cool. We played great, man. It was a great show, and uh, it was it was uh, it was cool. What seeing all those guys and hanging out with them, and uh, yeah, last last show I got to jam with the Deftones on the, on Head Up. Um, I think that's on YouTube somewhere. It's uh, it was fun. It was cool. Um, it's cool. They're like one of those bands that uh, no matter how popular or big they get, the guys are always the same. They they. They are immune to the rock star bug. I, yeah, I, it, I, 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 I love that about There's a sense of uh, a humbleness. In, in yes, that man. Yeah. Yes, man. And it's cool. Like uh, they're one of to me. They're one of those cult bands because um, I, I really, I really appreciate what they do. I have a lot of respect to what they do uh, musically, and uh, and but more than that, as friends, because we are friends since before. Um, when I was recording Roots, wow! That's when I that's when I discovered Deftones because of Dana. Um, they came to play in Phoenix, and I learned Engine Number no. Nine on guitar, and I went up in the stage and played with them in front of twenty people. There was nobody knew the Deftones back. There was like nobody there, and I jammed with them, and they were like, "Well, you know, you you know." I was like, "Yeah, I know. I know. Come, give me the guitar." And, you know. <laughs> and I started and I started jamming. They're like, "Holy shit! He knows the fucking song. This is crazy," you know. Um, and, and of course, the name Soulflight was born on on the Head Up song, you know, yeah. that I did on their record uh, around the four. And through the years, man, every time we see each other, it's not all the time. That's what's cool. There's gaps of years where we don't see each other, but whenever we do see it in a festival, most most of the time is festivals. Uh, we end up doing head up, and it's always fun. The crowd goes nuts, and it's always, uh, always a blast. You know, as you're telling me all this, Max. You know, a, a commonality within my show is, you know, I, I get a chance to ask my guests these questions, and and the thing that that really stands out, whether it's with you know Soulfly or, or Go Ahead and Die, Cavalier Conspiracy, uh, Sepultura, you know, one of the things that really brings out the best in you, Max, more than anything is when you were on stage, like you just discussed. I I've seen you do your thing for as long as I've been alive, man. A and the way that you have interacted with your crowd throughout your life. I mean, there's this, and there's this energy that just seemingly, I feel like it's unmatched. There's a passion in what you do and the way you do it. And you you mentioned those two shows, but you performed, bro, you performed at some of the biggest festivals, like, you know, Hellfest, Vakken, Brutal Assault, uh, Bloodstock, the list goes on and on. And, you know, considering that you guys toured Australia, you toured these countries last year, especially when this was something, you know, like I said, three years ago, that's what we started off this conversation with, you know, this was something that was stripped yeah. away from us, the touring yeah, life. Yeah. We had no idea. Uh, I'm kind of rounding it out this question. You know, would you say that you have a newfound appreciation of the touring life, the concert life, being in front of the fans, you know, because oh, yeah. I didn't know, you know, if I was going to get a chance to talk to you again. After we spoke three years ago, here we are. Of course, yeah, I've, yeah. I have a new sense of, you know, feeling grateful. I'm going to as many shows as I as I can now. I went to maybe over 100 shows last year. I've never done that in my life. <laughs> but yeah, no, for so, sure, yeah, for sure. Especially for someone like you who's been at this for as long as you have. For sure, man. You know, like it was, it, it was, it was tough on everybody. Like we did, we did other stuff to to survive. I end up recording a lot because there was, you know, you could still make records. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, you know, I think I did, I did Killer BQ. I did go ahead. Great and Great record, by the way, that dropped like at the um, end of 2020. I was like, yeah. holy shit. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that started before the pandemic. And yeah, we, we kind of came out like right on the, when the, the shit hit the fan. But when, when it was actually full, full pandemic, I, I got to do go ahead and die, which was great with my son, Igor. Igor Amadeus and uh that yep. was like a, a for me is a dream come true making an extreme metal record with your kid um giving zero fucks about 
who's going to like or don't like this thing, you know? It's like, I have no reservations of, 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 of like, I don't care. I just want to, like, do something gnarly with my kid. Like, you know, just fucking go for it. Like, old school, like, I'm 17 again without giving one fuck to the world, you know? And it's like, just pure caveman energy, you know? And that was, that was fucking awesome. And I got, I think, told him, um, yeah, it was actually also done during the pandemic. So I say I say most of the time, you know, a productive, creative. I did the Max tracks, which I'm doing it again. You know, yep. I got one th- Thursday. That's right. Got another one. Uh, bringing it back. Um, I was, was gonna so ask. Much, I was, was gonna so ask how that how that's going, but yeah, it's good. To yeah, you're doing it. It's again. cool. It's cool. It's I love by, it. Back by popular demand. No, I'm just kidding. It was fucking. I love <laughs> doing it, man. It's so punk rock, like. I really feel like yeah, when yeah. you do the Max Tracks, by the way, if anyone hasn't seen Max Tracks, please go to YouTube and check it out. It's, it's a thing of beauty because I feel like it shows a different side of you that I feel like fans have never seen before. And you just kind Bro. of, just, you cut loose, man. You're it's probably so, the most chill person. It's, and they're it's like, so, <laughs> it's so punk rock. The, the, the one I did one with Mike, right. To announce Mike yeah. joining Soul Fly. And like half an hour before we getting ready to go live. Uh, I realized I don't have a microphone, you know. I'm so, I'm, I'm looking at my, at my house. I'm looking everywhere. I'm looking at all the drawers. It's like, I know I have a mic. You know, it's like, and it's like, I don't have a microphone. But I know a trick that, that somebody taught me years ago that if you put a headphone and, and the headphone becomes a microphone. Do you know this? A headphone becomes a, what did you, what did you, right, right. <laughs> you so want to show me what you did? Yeah, so this, right? This is a yeah. headphone. So this part here, this is a head, this is a microphone. So if you plug this into a, into a speaker, you can talk on it and this becomes a microphone. For people who don't know, use that trick. It right. Works. If you don't have a microphone and you got to do <laughs> this is how punk rock Max Trex is. So I just grab a, a, a headphone from my wall cuz I I collect headphones. So I got about 50 on my wall. Uh, so I just grab one. Put Holy duct shit! Tape, I got like I got like three of these headsets like sitting on the opposite side of my room. I'm gonna try that out. <laughs> I had no yeah. idea. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure we knew, we knew like in like in the back of our head. Yeah, I probably could use it. But yeah, you're you're probably right on the hit the nail on the head right there. I'm gonna have to check it, that it, out. That's if, if it fucking works. I'm telling you, it works. <laughs> if um, Max says it, it just, works, you know it fucking yeah. works. <laughs> so so I duct tape it right, and I got the fucking headphone using it as a mic and that's yeah. th- that's how the max uh, track started with 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 mike de leon and, and it was cool i gave him like a i had a because i, I want to pick his brain too like i want to know who's i'm who am i hiring right yeah what kind of what, what kind of what kind of guy is this you know so i'm th- i'm asking you all these 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 questions like your favorite food your favorite drink your favorite place um your favorite guitar player and he drops a bomb. His favorite guitar player is CC the View from Poison, and I almost fucking lost my fucking what? mind. I was like, "What that, the fuck?" That, that was <laughs> that. That's probably one of the most uh, interesting answers I've ever heard when it comes to yeah, favorite guitar player. Yeah, I'm... yeah, it was crazy. It was kind of really unexpected, you know. Um, and and it was cool. We play a little bit of front lines. We play Superstition. We jam nice. together. The fans loved it, man. That they, they, they fucking a lot of people saw it and um yeah it's just fun doing so i did a lot of that in the pandemic but yeah going back to the original question i missed the shit out of the road right because it was like yeah this is one thing that we have that's ours and it's like my whole life is being based on on going on the road and perform my whole life this, this is all i know since i was 17 years old 16 I started touring uh, very internationally and everything probably when I was 18. Um, I think like the Beneath the Remains tour. Yeah. I was probably around 18. Um, so that's a long time. I'm 53, you know, 53. So it's many, many yeah. years. So, so when the pandemic hit and we don't have that anymore, it was a mind fuck, man. It's like, and it was all this insert, you know, uncertainty. Like, are there were all these gonna, cancellations. Are we ever gonna postpone, play live? Postpone, postpone. Yeah. Like, are, we, are we ever gonna play live again? I saw people doing the the driving theater thing, and hey, 
It was I, like, like I, a... I did that. So check this out, Max. So here's the thing. I, I've seen I've seen you countless amount, amounts of times. You're you're one of my favorite performers to see live. One band I've never seen live, believe it or not. I've seen Gojira. I've seen Deftones, Megadeth. I have never seen Metallica. And if you remember, Metallica did this live streaming event that August, I believe. And they did just for one weekend. They did it in every major city. They live stream uh, a live show event. And here in Dallas, I went. A friend of mine had an extra ticket. I haven't told this story in a while. So this is actually pretty fun telling you this. So we decided to go. I'm like, okay, sure. I'll see what I'll do. I've never been to a live streaming event before. I mean, you can just, you know, mosh in your own room, right? Why would you want to go out and see the live streaming event? Anyway, we went. It was at a drive-in theater. And it was like, it, wow. it, was, it was crazy. You know, you know what's, the, what's the thing we hear at a metal show? Let me see those horns. And you see everybody just, it's like a, you get that adrenaline rush, right? You see yeah. everyone in the sea of horns. Instead, what do we get? James Hetfield goes, hey, uh, 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 let me hear you guys honk your horns. <laughs> so if you roll your window down, you just hear cars honking their horns like in silence. Oh, it, was so, it, was, it was so awkward, but it was, it was interesting to see at the same time because it was just silence. But it was a great turnout, you know. I just, uh, I mean, it was it was nice for that weekend. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, was... people people did different things, and um, we we end up um, we 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 recorded a, a go ahead and show that we were going to stream it. Yeah, we end up we end up not streaming. I don't know why. I don't know what happened to. I think that it 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 wasn't mixed properly, and um, we kind of like put it on the back burner. Uh, I think we're still gonna put it out because it's badass. It's like we played the whole record live in a studio. Oh, that's all right. That already sounds badass, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and I mean, I wish, I wish it was streamed live. It would have been great. It would have been great, man. It was, it was so cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, like we we did other things, but yeah, I mean, I I had my first my first two birthdays at home in thirty years. I was like, "Well, this how is was weird. that? Did you celebrate? Did you get a cake? Did you, did yeah. you guys do like a barbecue? Oh, we do barbecues in Texas, by the way. So yeah, yeah, we we I mean we we're very family vibe here at home. So we have like like a shitload of grandkids, and all my kids come. And, and what we do is, uh, you know, we had a we had a little cake, um, and then we go play." Uh, Play football and soccer in the backyard. You know, I saw you. I saw that video of you playing football with your kids the other day on Instagram. That's that's right, really cool. Yeah, I was gonna ask yeah, if, yeah. You, if you watched the World Cup this year because this was one of the first years that I actually I, I like to watch the World Cup when I can. But I really paid attention this year. I don't know if you watched it. Yeah, anyway. yeah, but we don't we don't talk about that. <laughs> Fuck Argentina. <laughs> I we're was like, fucking, should I ask him about we're, that? No, I, we're mortal. Family, we're my, mortal my, enemies. We're mortal enemies, bro. We're more my enemies. family and we were we were all going for Brazil, um, and we were just like, "What the hell?" And uh, I I'm we... so tired of people coming. Oh, but Messi deserves a fuck Messi and fuck Argentina. Sorry if there's Argentina people watching this shit, but I, I have to fucking come when it comes to to, to soccer. It's like there's no oh excuses. Oh my goodness! Oh my but, goodness! Uh, yeah, yeah, Brazil. Yeah, I was so pissed. Hey, man. I, they, I was really like... glad when when Brazil uh, got the gold in the Olympics. I think that was. Uh, in Rio, uh, uh, not not too long ago, in 2016, I believe, when um, Neymar hit that yeah, listen, penalty kick. Listen, that was beautiful. I, I, I'm going to start a campaign. Brazil needs to go back to the thug, the thug soccer that we play with Pelé. Pelé comes from the favelas. He's a thug, man. He's a full-on thug, and we lost that. The shit got too, there's too much money on it, and all mm -hmm. these guys are making way too much money. They don't give a shit. We need to go back to that dog mentality that Brazil had it, you know, because we were the fucking shit. You know, when you when you watch uh the 94 World Cup, when you yeah. watch the, the 70 World Cup with Pelé, uh, which by the way just died yeah. not too long R rest ago. Rest in peace to that legend. Yeah, Pelé. rest in power, rest in power. Rest in power. I, got to, I got to meet him in the 90s in That's New York. So awesome. it, was, it was great. Uh but yeah, I feel this is just my feeling, but I feel that I think they there's too much money now in it, and Brazil needs to go back to the dog mentality days. Then we'll be okay if we do that. If we because I know a lot of those guys, they do come from the the, the favela ghettos, the, the the bad areas. Yeah, um, and uh, they just gotta remember that they gotta remember when they didn't have any, you know, not even money to buy a soccer ball, you know, and. Uh, 
Because that's what Pelé name. Do you know Pelé? The name Pelé means ball made out of socks. So I did not they, know they, that. Yeah, they did not have money to buy a soccer ball. That's how fucking poor they were. So they all collect socks from the other kids in the neighborhood, and they make they make probably with duct tape. They make a soccer ball out of sock, and then and then the the nickname of, of that was Pelé. And then so became becomes his nickname. So he's he's literally nicknamed from the thing that they play. That's his nickname, you know, because his real name is Edison Arantes do Nascimento. Yes. And uh, it, it's really I, thank you for telling me that. And it really shows a significant. It has, it has nothing to it has nothing to do with matter. But I'm, I'm teaching. No, you no, some, it doesn't. But it, it's, it's important, man. It's important. <laughs> you know, it, you're. You know, I know you're you're Brazilian. This is important. Even the thing about Pele, he transcended past sports. I mean, I mean, even Megadeth posted about Pele's death. You know, yeah, it, yeah, it transcends sports. Cool. You know, it and it really shows how a an individual represents himself, how he goes about his business, what he did for his country. You know, and 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 the oh yeah, the way he influenced other people. And you're right, Max. Not even just football, man. Even American football is the same way. Basketball, like people, it's all about the, you know, and uh, yeah. it's just, I feel like it's it's been taken over. And uh, of course, you know, um, and I know you're a big Detroit Lions fan. Um, I was rooting for the Lions this year. Here's the deal. Uh, I'm a, I'm a Giants fan. So the I my, my my grandkids are Giants. I'm pulling for the Giants. Right? Man, I I hope so. So I go to so I'll I'll tell you this. I go to one. I go to two Giants games every year. So this year, uh, I went to the Tennessee game when we beat the Titans in Nashville. That was really cool. And that, since I live in Dallas, of course, when the Giants that was first came, first game, right? First yeah, that game. was first game. That was crazy. I I was so pissed off at halftime. We were down thirteen to nothing, and it was just I was ready to go. And we I spent all this money traveling to Nashville. We sit there. We're down thirteen nothing. Bam, we come back and win that game. That was one of the greatest memories ever. Um, anyway, and, and then, of course, when they came here to Dallas and Thanksgiving, who knows? They could come back to Dallas for the NFC Championship game the following week if the Giants win and the Cowboys. Uh, I don't like the Cowboys, oh. but, but, you know, we'll see. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah, and, I mean, the, the Lions the Lions are tough. We play tough. You guys should have made the playoffs. You guys yeah, deserved yeah. it more than, like, half the teams. I mean, yeah. it, the way you guys more, beat Green Bay. More than, more than Tampa Bay, for sure. More than Tampa Bay? I also yeah. think even more than Seattle, even. You know, you guys yeah. you guys would have given those teams. You guys gave us a hard time. <laughs> we lost yeah. to y'all. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. We played tough. <laughs> we got we got, we got got dog mentality in, and, in and, Detroit. <laughs> and for people who don't know, Max is an avid Detroit Lions fan. I thought it was very interesting. Uh, I read the story about you becoming a Detroit, Detroit Lions fan because you went to a, a, a game in Arizona, I believe. And I don't know who they were playing. I don't know if they were playing the Lions, but you were trying to, you were trying to figure out who is your team, right, Max? It wasn't the Cardinals, but you do have a soft yeah. spot for for the Arizona teams. But I think it's really interesting. You did a, a tour at Ford Field. Do you have a Detroit Lions? Do you have a Detroit Lions tattoo? That's what you need now. No, not yet, <laughs> not yet. I'm trying. I'll try to get that and try to get a a, a Detroit Lions guitar. That's that's where I'm. There we at. go. Now we're talking, uh, man. But no, like I think it was maybe like 10 years ago and everybody here is a Cardinals fan. And I, I, I want to have my own team, right? Like, yeah, uh, you know, my you're, own... you're a rebel like me. <laughs> yeah, I'm I, a Giants I, fan I, living in Dallas. I, I, I can <laughs> roll. Does I, that? I, I, I can roll with, with the city. I got to roll different from the city. So it was like, you know, I'm looking at the teams. I'm looking at, you know, the whole landscape and, I'm a Leo, you know, my sign is, is a is a Leo, is a lion. And I'm like, yep. the lions, let's go. That's it. That's 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 my I had, I by the way, I had no idea. I didn't even know who Barry Sanders was. I I got to look all that up. Man. I learned I learned I learned later all these great these great names, you know, Megatron and all that. But we did a tour of Ford Field, and that was with there was a fan that works with the Lions and we had a day off in, in Detroit and he got me uh yeah, he got us a, a tour of the stadium. We went everywhere. We went to the dressing room. We got to touch, you know, Matt Stafford's locker, you know, got to touch. That the, is so sick. We went to the field. Uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty sweet, man. That was cool. We got to, got to see that, that the whole stadium got to do a whole tour of it. I was hoping that one of them would be a metalhead, man, you know, like, 
So, because I heard, I heard some <laughs> some players are metalheads. You yeah. know, I I think the head coach now, Dan Campbell, a great guy, by the way. I'm I, I am certain he listens to heavy metal. You just you can just see it in him. Um, yeah, and I, he, and looks, I'm sure. he looks like. And and here's the thing: we're gonna publish this on all major podcast streams. I'm gonna make sure they know that you know awesome <laughs> it, it, that, that's how it's gonna be the, the detroit lions need to be aware of this because because we we met we met one guy kyle Tur turley uh kyle you know, Tur used, yeah okay you should play for the rams yes when when okay. the rams so when was st louis rams and they they won the 2000 i think it was 2000 yes uh, super, super bowl. bowl yeah yeah i remember that so the week that they won the super bowl he came to see Soulfly, and it was him and two other guys from the team big motherfuckers man you know they show up with the fucking super ball jackets the fucking rings you know fucking yeah it was awesome man it was like wow that's pretty that's impressive you know this the you know uh and he's a he was he's a big soulfly fan and uh it was cool just shooting the shit with him also, Randy Johnson, you know he uh, the baseball player. I don't know. Holy shit! Yeah, baseball. yeah. He's 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 but, a he's uh, a legendary pitcher, actually. Yeah, he's Left a huge. Pitcher. He's a huge Sepultura fan. Like like he knows the shit. That's knows... news to me. I had no idea. That's no, fucking no. awesome. One time when we were playing, he came to the show and he's looking at the set list and he's going, "Oh, holy shit! You guys are gonna play Troops of Doom? Fuck yeah!" And I was like, "Oh, oh what the fuck? time time out? What? The... <laughs> How you know Troops of Doom, man?" Oh, I, I love the Morbid Visions. Are you kidding me? That's one of the rawest records you guys ever done. Blah blah blah. And it's like, man, that's fucking cool. You know, that's that's unexpected. Uh, but yeah, I love I love when sports and 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 metal uh, mix. That was kind of one of the things we actually were trying. To, we 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 try to do that a lot. I do most of that in Europe. I yeah. wear a lot of soccer shirts. Yep, um, I, I I do see that. You you know what's what's really cool? So I'm I don't know if you watch hockey but hockey is starting to become a prominent thing down here in texas of course the dallas stars i i'm an avid stars fan of course when i go to the games the soundtrack i kid you not soulfly gojira deftones megadeth oh really they wow. play heavy metal in the arena i'm That's not sick kidding. i That's remember sick. when when the stars made the playoffs uh uh last year the introduction did you know the dallas stars uh theme song is pantera no, Pantera, but I, that's, Pantera, doesn't, doesn't surprise me. Pat, Dime and Vinny wrote, by the way, shout out to those guys, because I've loved those guys. Um, of course, they're prominent down here in Dallas. Those guys, specifically for people that don't know, they wrote a song for the Dallas Stars. Wow. And when the Stars, big. when that's the Dallas cool. Stars score a goal, they play the song that Pantera, nice. it's, it's a heavy metal song. Every go, After every goal, they play, they play that song. That's cool. And, That's cool. And they when the there's a huge uh, uh, we're gonna get to our next topic, but that when a there's a huge star that comes down on the ice when the, before the game starts, and the song "Domination" from Pantera plays that wow. solo when Dime plays that solo. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I'm yeah. getting goosebumps as I'm telling you this. It's insane. It's complete darkness. The green star goes and it doo -doo 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 -doo. like it's that that was insane. Like and people are like, this song is heavy. I'm like, this is fucking Pantera. I mean, yeah. this and Pantera is avid within Dallas Stars. Anyway. Now Listen, you know. So, if, so if, if, if I'm a hockey down, player, if I'm yeah. a hockey player, what what do I want to hear right before I go hit some motherfuckers? And hell yeah, yeah, that's the and, point. Uh, you know, <laughs> I I, I want to hear some Slayer. I want to hear some Refuse and Resist. You yeah, know, uh, wanna, they, they played they played uh, Raining uh, Blood. They played Raining I Blood wanna, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to hear some Jump the Fuck Up. Give me all that, you know. So, uh, hell yeah, man. That's 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 cool. I'm not that in too much. I don't know much about hockey. Like I know a little bit. My 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 crew guy. My guitar crew loves the Kings. He's a Ooh. huge uh, LA I, Kings I, fan. Yeah, I've been to a Kings game out in Los Angeles. It is it is amazing. That's an exp you just have to go to a hockey game, Max. You have to experience it, dude. Because yeah. I mean, not even just in Dallas, but uh, heavy metal is prominent in hockey more wow, than any other sport. Cool. I'm telling you this for as long as I've been a fan. Heavy yeah. metal is prominent in there. So, and you'll see it. Detroit Red Wings. If you're, uh -huh. I hate the Red Wings, but if you're a fan, it's okay. I'm nothing against you because Red Wings I, are our Red Wings are our, our uh, rivals. So Detroit Red yeah. Wings are prominent in the. See that? Course. See that's the that's the beautiful thing about me. I don't have a hockey team right now. I get to pick one. You get to pick one. So 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 yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my research. 
I'm gonna check in on the Dallas Stars. I'm gonna yeah. check in. I'm gonna if, check I'm, in. I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send the song. I'm gonna send you, you just search Dallas Stars Goldhorn on YouTube, and it's the right. it's the it's the song Diamond Vinny created. Um, nice. uh, but Max, uh, real quick, <laughs> we talked about everything except except the tour because it, it's so exciting. I don't. I know there's a lot of exciting things to unravel about about what what you have going on, of course, in Soulfly coming up for this year, right? This is like this is like two dudes in a bar, man. Just you're just missing the drinks, bro. We're missing the wings, the wings and the drinks. What I'm saying, that's what we're missing. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, touring is one of them, which is one of the greatest things to, to see happening again. This 57 date trek that's coming up, holy shit! Uh, starts January 25th, if I'm not mistaken, all the way to April 1st. You got Body Box, you got Hafford Voices, Skin Flint, Drift throughout these select dates on this tour. Yeah. Here's the thing, Max. I ask a lot of questions to my guests about, you know, the chemistry between members of the same band because I find I find those stories kind of really interesting, you know. But in this case, I, I want to talk about the chemistry between these different bands you have on these on this tour because there's a mix of some great underground bands uh, that people may not even have heard of because I know you, out of all people are one of the biggest advocate for underground music. You know, I remember when, um, uh, when we did the interview last time in uh, three, three years ago, you were wearing a neck rot shirt and not many yeah. people have heard of neck rot. And what, uh, lo and behold, I chose, I wanted to get neck rot on my show later that year. And that it was great. I had those guys on the show. There were some of the great, great people, but I, I, the question I want to ask is, do you think it takes, chemistry to make tours like these work the fact that you're also helping these bands grow while bringing them on tour with you because people know soulfly they know your face you know they, they know zion but maybe they, maybe they've never heard of these bands you know it's yeah, really yeah. cool to see that i mean that's one of the things that we do that i i think is great um you know we of course the, the booking agent asks us you know what what do we want to do and I think you even even mentioned, um, do you guys want to just don't take anybody, just go, just do your own thing? And and that's the first thing I go is like, nope, no, 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 stop right there, bro, stop. <laughs> I wouldn't we're mind. Not, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. All right. But let me let me explain to you the the why we don't do that. Because Good. when I was a shit, you know, a shithead, fifteen year old. People gave me breaks, man. You work. know, people get you know, fucking, uh, fucking Venom came to Brazil and put Sepultura to open the show. Um, Damn. Nuclear Assault went to Brazil and we opened for them. Napalm Death went to Brazil and we opened for them. Uh, that was just the Brazilian shows. And then when we start touring, Pantera took us on tour. Ministry took us on tour. Ozzy took us on tour. With Soulfly, Slayer took us on tour. Ramstein took took Soulfly on tour. Um, Goodness gracious! You know, Morbid Angel. We did Soulfly. Pantera took us twice. It took Sepultura. Then a couple of years later, it took Soulfly and Morbid Angel. Um, and that's why I'm always so tight with 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 Dimebag and Vinny and all those guys. Um, but that's the thing, like. It's cool to give somebody that opportunity. Like you say, like I'm I'm a well established act already, you know. So people know they know what they're gonna get. They 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 you know they know my music, they know my catalog and and all that. But a lot of them maybe never heard of Body Box or last year, two hundred stab wounds was one of the bands we took oh, on tour. They just signed with Metal Blade. Shout out to those guys. I fucking yeah. love two hundred stab wounds. When Holy we shit. when when we took them, nobody knew uh Two hundred stab wounds was like I remember friends of mine coming to the tour, and and they were like, "Holy shit, man! I just saw your opening band. They're fucking badass." <laughs> and and I was like, "Yeah, they are right. They're awesome, right?" And and I I knew from watching them, it's like, this kid's gonna be all right. They're gonna they they're gonna be you know they're gonna do good stuff, you know. Um, and that's why we we kind of do this. You know, together with with a booking agent, we pick those bands, and some of them. Uh, it's not the first time. Skin Flint is from South Africa, and they're awesome guys. They're really, really cool guys. I and listen to all those bands, dude. It, it's I, I cannot wait for people to yeah, see these guys. Bo right? Body Body Box to me is like very, very, very similar to to Understand Wounds, as far as like that punchy, fucking you know grind 
death metal grind type shit. I don't do mosh pits anymore, Max, but those bands make me want to go back in. Yeah, Maybe. yeah. So 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 that that's why we do that. I'm getting too know? old for that. <laughs> of course, if we had the chance in the future to make a bigger package, of course we would do that, you know, and I, and I think there is the um uh, hopefully we will we'll get to do that with, yeah. with other more established bands that would be cool to do stuff like like we did with with uh, you know so fly went on tour with Nile we went on tour with uh cattle decapitation you know so um you know it would be cool to to do a tour with fear factory it would be cool to do a tour with obituary we cool to do a tour with hey breed whatever you know that the, all those are the little bigger bands make a package that's not happening right now and we can sit and wait so we do our own thing in the meantime yeah. you know and that's and this is the tour it's a crazy fucking tour it's 57 dates it's nine weeks nobody does that anymore it's like we are we are the most insane bunch of lunatics in the on the planet to to be on the road for that long, man. That's insanity. That's I'm leaving next week. I don't come back to April. That's in, <laughs> that's fucking insane. But it's cool. I love it. I'm a road dog, you know. I just, you know, I, my some of my best memories are are uh on the road, from the road. Rather be hanging out with with watching Pantera, uh watching Ozzy every night, or uh, you know, watching Slayer, hanging out with the guys. Um, fucking by the, man! By the time you get back, Max, you're gonna be on the road this year more than you've been home. <laughs> home, yeah. I think I feel like home for you is on the road, man. I don't even know if that you know. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? I was thinking about buying one of those those beds that you put a coin and the whole bed shakes. So it feels like the it feels like a, the bus. You know, the, you need to do that. <laughs> so 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 when I come home, I still think I'm on tour. My brain. <laughs> Still thinks that I'm on tour. That's a great. I, I didn't even think about that. That's a great way to uh describe that, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I, I, like I said, I'll, some of my best memories, uh, are 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 on the road from from crazy drunk things. Uh, like I remember, uh, <laughs> fucking. I love those tour stories. Here we go. <laughs> playing playing with a uh, playing with Ozzy, right? And Allison Chains. Uh, Lane, the singer, used to come to our bus. A lot. He fucking loved our bus. God damn, Lane because, Staley. Because because we we were a bunch of renegades, and we blessed like the most ungodly death metal you could hear was always blasting in our speakers. You know, terrorizer and fucking you know brutal truth. And he loved that man. He thought ah, that was brutal the, truth. He thought that was the coolest thing. He's like, I'm going to go hang out with Sepultura in their bus because they're fucking crazy. They listen to the crazy music. And and he would show up without eyebrows. He used to shave his eyebrows. <laughs> Lane? Yeah, yeah. He shaved no eyebrows, bro. It was crazy. Um, And he had an acoustic guitar with him. And he would do all these made-up songs for hours. We'd just be drinking and... He it was I wish we had a film we should have filmed that shit man would have make we'd make a great home video um yeah man so all those all those tour stories those are great like when we go on tour you bond with the other bands and and cool shit like that happened that's one of the things I like to do um that's what I like to 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 get to get with the other bands and play uh cover songs you know if you're talking about Mike Daly on right Hey, this is a good way to get to know him. Fifty-seven days. <laughs> oh yeah, so. oh yeah. No, that that that's why I had to do him the. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I had to task him like I make sure this guy's right. You know, make sure this is the the right. You know, the 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 right cabron yeah. for the and, for the and, game. And for people who don't know Mike DeLeon, he's known for his work with, of course, Philip and Salmo and the Illegals, Flesh Hoarder, Disfigured, Mike's Mike's. Uh, I list. I I did a lot of work on Mike before uh, you and me Texas, sat down. And, Texas guy, Texas guy. Yeah, he's uh, he's from Texas too. You know, it's uh, and he you got him on guitar. I feel like I feel like uh, there's like a new element that Mike brings in a Soulfly that you may not have had in the lineup before he joined. You know? Yeah, I mean Mike's awesome. Uh, like uh, as a person, and I think the vibe he brings out to school is like, yeah, it's it's got this this whole. Uh, 
crazy crazy swagger like right I, I don't even know to, how to explain but just looks cool with the fucking bandido mustache <laughs> look it looks he looks like one of the like could come from a western movie you know or or, or, or like a man you yeah. guys when you guys up on stage and trees I don't know if this is even possible. I don't know if, if Glory can fix you guys up. Get get like hats. Get some cowboy hats and get up on stage on trees, man. Yeah, that would there you go. That there would be go. a thing of beauty. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you both, Mike's and Zion, Zion yeah. back there with his hat. You'll see oh, him. Yeah. Zion's uh, he's like the same height as my older brother. He's like tall and skinny the, with the cowboy hat. Just put him back there with the drum kit. He'll fit fit right in. And that's it's, a good it's, idea. It's, that's it's, a good idea. I'm just saying, and it's really cool because. Uh, I think Dallas is like the fifth day on the tour. I, I always think about like what it'll be like on like the fifty seventh day. Like you guys come back around, and what's the longest tour you've been on? Fifty seven days is, of course, that's like almost two months. But what's the? Do can you even answer that question? Like, what would be the longest tour you've been on, Max? Does it ever reach a hundred days? Can you even go on like a hundred day tour? I'm sure bands uh, that, right. Some bands probably have. We I haven't. I haven't. That's like. I mean, I've done. I done like half months. Jesus. Yeah, I done um back in, in the Arise days, there was some tours of similar to this one we're doing right now. Um that's that's awesome. But I I don't think it's I don't think we ever reached uh, nine weeks. I think that's this is probably the, the longest I ever done. Um wow. There was some that we went to Europe three times in the same year. You know, so if you put all the three together, then it's probably yeah, like, it'll, like it'll, a, it'll last over probably like a hundred shows, probably like a hundred shows. So it was probably like, you know, maybe like 45 first time, 45 second yeah. time, 30 the, the third time. Um, but that was all in one year. We did that one year. Um, no, I love it, man. I agree. I think it's great. I think it's good. Yeah. I think, I think it's uh, kind of like, uh, uh, I, you know, that the mentality, um, what is it? Iron sharp as iron, right? Yeah, um, yeah. That's the, that's it. Yeah, so yeah. That's the, we, I, was like, gonna, I was thinking about that. Something like that. Yeah, we're gonna get right. we're gonna get tighter. We're gonna get tighter as the tour goes, to, and we're gonna add some stuff. I already had some other tracks in mind to 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 add. And the thing I was saying about uh, opening bands and and what I like to do also is get together with them. And do uh, just to fuck around in the end of the set. You just do cover songs, you know. That's uh, that's that's awesome. You should do that. It really yeah, should. I, I, I also think that really shows a lot of authenticity within the musician. Just cut loose and just hang out. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you know they they're gonna get the show right. They're gonna get they're gonna get the Soulfly show. So that's like a bonus, you know. They get to see something extra. They get to see a little thing, a little bonus thing that that involves everybody that it's around the tour um uh, we did it with uh, we did it with the with 200 stab wounds we end up doing hate breed and cannibal corpse you know it was cool um and it was awesome it was it was i think is on is on youtube somewhere and then i think we did one with toxic holocaust we did uh evil dead from death yeah from uh yeah from the first record um and and i i think when i did the return to roots we did uh yeah we did black metal from venom with full of hell and immolation and that was uh man that was also, full of hell that was also another cool. great that up and coming cool. band man that's yeah that, that's really cool that you're, you're doing all that um uh max uh we don't have much time left. I, I don't want to keep you for too long, bro. But man, I'll be there on February first, dude. It'll be great to if you bring the out, bring the cowboy hats and we get, we get if, to use it. If you're hanging out after the show uh, or before, let me know. I'll, I'll be there. It'll it'll be just just be great to see you again. You know, just in person. It's awesome, like, man. And, and we'll talk about you know, of course, from the, the pandemic started to where we are now. It's it's really cool. And now, real quick, I mean, I got a little surprise for you at the end. I'm gonna tell you what it is, but. Uh, before we finish things off here, I know we've covered a, a good amount of ground on this awesome conversation, of, of course. And always great to have you back on here. Uh, the discussions we've had, you know, have, have always been such a good time, you know. And I can't help but ask, Max, you know, you, you've been at this for as long as you have. 
what is the most, you know, think about this. What is the most rewarding part for someone like you who is now at this point in their career? Another way to see it, you know, at the same time, you've been involved with many other different aforementioned talented people, artists, bands throughout your timeline that we have discussed. You know, your relationship with your bandmates, your family, your fans. Uh, what is it? Four decades and counting, uh, culminating countless records. You know, I'm always excited to see, you know, where you go from one point in your life to the next. You know, again, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, Max, you know, buying those uh, Sepultura records when I first started getting in heavy metal. You know, here we are, you know, like, like a new chapter with you, Soulfly, the new album, the new year as a musician, as a front man or hell as a human being. Do you ever just stop for a moment take a, to take a look back at how far you've come? Not really. I mean, I, I, I do that a little bit when I have to get ready for to play some, get prepared for some tours. Like, you know, we did Beneath the Remains and Arise. I had to go back and uh, revisit those records and, and remember the riffs. It was It's kind of like riding a bicycle, actually. Um, the riffs just come back to you, you know. It's muscle and memory. Like, yeah, and and it was funny because um, uh, I was actually I, I was actually watching for curiosity. I went on YouTube and I I put an a I put a song. I think it was Primitive Future, and I want to see how how somebody was playing uh, Primitive Future on YouTube. And they were playing it wrong, and it was so it was funny. I was watching the videos, like no, 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 that's that's not no, that's not right. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm doing right. I wrote this shit. I know how, I know how <laughs> I know how this goes. I know how it goes because because like I said, it's like riding a bicycle, right? Uh, so when I, when I have to do that, I go back and listen to my own stuff, like Soul Flight tours. I have to I, I listen to a lot of the rec, find the right songs. As far as like uh, uh, the life in general, the lifestyle in general, uh, I don't really look back that much. I'm always for present, future, mm -hmm. and 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 the, the the thing about metal, right? That's the the coolest thing to me is that it's like mafia. Once you get in, you can't get out. We are in this shit for life. Man, I wish right? we had a beer so we can cheers to that, man. That's what we need. We need a drink. Yeah. I'm buying you a beer when you get here. Yeah. <laughs> Metal, I've, I've got to put that on a shirt. Metal is like mafia. Once you're in, you can't get out. <laughs> oh, okay. Make sure you copyright that. Trademark yeah. that. That is yeah. perfect. Yeah. So it's 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 like that, you know. So that's why, you know, four decades later, I still meet fans that grew up with my music in the 80s, like you, you know. And, and I meet young kids that, were not born when those records came out, but they still love them the same. You know, they love them and and they love the new Soulfly and and and, and Killer BQ and Go Ahead and Die. I like to stay busy. I think that yeah. I'm I'm one of those guys. You rest when you're dead. That's that's when you rest. While you're here, let's do let's do some shit. Because uh, to me, it's like. It's not even work, man. You know, it's fun. You know, I love I love playing music. It comes from the heart, um, fully like a passion about what I do. It's, it's it's such a it's in the fabric, it's in the blood. You know, so it's like uh, when I'm on the stage, it's like I don't want to. There's no other place I, I I'd rather be than right there, right, right, right now. You know, it's like the moment. You know. Um, and, and, and that, by the way, doesn't matter where. It could be a hundred people. I'm having a fucking ball. Like, yeah, people might think, well, you know, you're an established artist. You know, people call you a legend. You know, why are you doing playing in front of a hundred people? Um, well, you just don't know me if you if you think that, because to me, there's something really, really primal about the intimacy of those shows those uh, those 150 people that are connected entirely by the, the the sounds and the songs it's like you know i call those shows the punk rock shows where motherfuckers gonna be falling on my pedals they're gonna spill beer on my head 
Um, I'm going to be singing, speeding, and the front dude, front guy is getting all the speed in his face, but he doesn't care. He's like wiping and screaming with me, you know. It's fucking, it's the best. It's the best. And 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 as, as much as I love the big festivals and the big shows, I don't know. Sometimes I think the punk shows are where I really enjoy myself the most. So where I really have the most fun is like those small fucking shows are so fun. They're so cool. It's like it feels it's more unique, personal it, too. It's a it's a unique experience. You know, it's like you and your crowd are one. It's one tribe right there. It's like like the tribe is united right there. It's yeah. so cool. Um, and, and it's like it's you're our playing thing, at you trees. Know? You playing at trees, by the way, which is the perfect venue for that. I don't. You, you've been to trees, right? Yeah, 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 it's yeah, it's perfect. It's great. So it's you great. know that's that's like the, I was I was thinking about what <clears throat> venue do we? Oh, trees. He's gonna be here in a couple weeks. Yeah, yeah. That, that you know, that that's perfect. I mean, I I like I I I always I joke with people. I call Texas the Germany of metal, uh, the the Germany of America. You know, um, because Germany is so metal. And Texas is so metal. Like, once we enter Texas, you know the shows are going to be off the hook. You just don't... <laughs> you don't even have to worry. You don't have to worry. Sometimes, you are correct, sir. <laughs> sometimes sometimes you, you you can be in, in Montana. Might be a Monday night in Montana. It, it might not be popping, you know. You might have a smaller crowd. But not, not when you're in Texas, man. <laughs> when you're in Texas, it's going to be... It fucking it's gonna be full packed exciting and uh, we're gonna have a great time i don't know if you i don't know if you intentionally picked or, or who, the booking agent picked this specific day you're gonna be in texas on a wednesday so it's you know it's gonna be popping on a wednesday night oh, yeah, in the yeah, middle, middle of, the, of week the week in texas yeah yeah it's perfect <laughs> man it's perfect and, and, and <laughs> i can't and i can't wait to have you on here and thank you so much for sharing all that max i i, I, I like to ask that question because you know when i sat with you you know I didn't know what to expect. And then sitting with you, getting a chance to know you, getting to meet Zion and Gloria, it was just, there was that sense of humbleness. You, you're doing what you do because you have a passion for it. That's an inspiration that I can take. Even others can take from it to do what they want to do, you know? So awesome, um, I, I, I just want to thank you for everything you've done. Keep doing what you're doing, man. You're, you're, Hell fucking, yeah. you're fucking great at it. I mean, it, you're like I said, it's it's something that I can take. It's something I can learn. But you're just a fucking amazing dude to talk to. I mean, we just we're just missing the beers and the wings, which we'll take care of in a couple of weeks. In All trees, right. <laughs> it's gonna be fucking awesome. Um, get the cowboy hats out, and uh, I'll keep in touch with with your with your publicist and see if we can make that work. But, uh, bro, man, thank you so much, just from the bottom of my heart, for uh, doing this with me. Um, it's this. Oh, I can't wait to have you again, man. We need. I feel like these. We need to have our own podcast, Max, because we could exactly. talk forever. <laughs> all right. Yeah. But all right, man. Hey, I appreciate all the support, brother. And I'll see you in Texas, my man. Everyone is listening. This is Max Cavalier of Soulfly. Uh, don't uh, totems right out right now worldwide on Nuclear Blast Records. Do me and Max a favor. Buy the record. You, you know, really, it means a lot. You know, because they, it's a great fucking record. I mean. It, it's so fly totem you guys really one up yourselves i mean i i thought i mean i i thought that i mean the last album was was absolutely ritual was amazing i don't know how you guys were gonna, were gonna top it and you topped it with totem anyway it's out so people please buy it yeah, yeah. uh you can listen to this podcast on all major podcast streams out there check us out on interviewunderfire.com max much love brother uh, too, take brother. care have a great tour i'll see you in a yeah. couple weeks man and go, right, Lions. go Lions. Go Lions. Go right. Giants. Go Giants. Hell yeah, go Giants. <laughs> All right. Much love, right. brother. Take Bye. care, man. <laughs>